by seven frames to five. And four frames in less than an hour. It's uh, assumed the pace of a final, assumed the quality of a final, hasn't it, Terry? Much, much better. Yes, it is. It's a totally different game from this afternoon. I mean, there's a lot more breaks, so the frames are quicker. It's just this afternoon, they weren't making the breaks, so there's a lot more safety play. We spent a lot of this afternoon looking for turning points, wondering if this shot or that shot would be a turning point. <laughs> I think we may have one now, might we? Uh, Mark Selby was looking good to make it six all, and then this happened. Yes, not an easy block. He's a little bit thinner than he hoped there. If the white was up another inch or so, that would be a certainty. But uh, at this standard, the way Sullivan's playing, you've got to make those, I'm afraid. Yes, I'm not sure whether any player would fancy coming back out now two frames behind to O'Sullivan and he only needs two more. Um, well, it all depends on if Sullivan's playing. And on this form, you're quite right. I mean, if you're two frames behind and your opponent isn't playing at his best, but uh, Sullivan is close to his best here this evening, and uh, let's be honest, it's very special to watch. Yeah, how close to his best? How special? Well, he'll say he's nowhere near it, he always does, but um, I mean, he gives so much pleasure to everybody, but even his fellow professionals love watching him play, and that says it all. How close is he to your best? Oh, he's not that good. <laughs> <laughs> Stay on board, Terry. <laughs> I've got some in interesting, we'll hear some thoughts for you in a, in a moment on tape and then we'll discuss it even further because uh, this week at the Welsh Open, the home challenge faded away before the quarter-final stages to the frustration of many of the home fans here. And in fact, uh, the recent record of Welsh players isn't the best. When we come back next year for this tournament, it'll be ten years since a Welshman last won it. That was Mark Williams. But why? Especially when there's such a depth of Welsh talent at the moment. We've got four players in the top 32. Indeed, two of those contested the final in China at the beginning of this season, at Ryan Day and Dominic Dale. So what happens when they come back to Wales? Here are some thoughts from the players themselves. The early punches thrown by the six times world champion, but Mark Williams, the 23 year old from Combe, proves the victor yet again. He's defeated Stephen Henry for the third time in the final. It's Williams, the 1999 Regal Welsh champion. I don't know why the Welsh uh, people haven't won more tournaments than they have, because the talent we've got in, in you know, the main five is me, Ryan, Matthew, Dominic, and there's plenty of other youngsters coming through. It's been very disappointing in one respect. I mean, Darren Morgan got to the final year in the early 90s and didn't really get near winning the tournament against Stephen Henry in the final. And um, apart from that, we just had Mark Williams winning twice. a small country and there's only four players coming to a f tournament with a field of 48 so um, the, the odds are never stacked in your favour really. The strength and depth in, in snooker is fantastic and there's players that the public have never heard of and especially when you're playing them in the qualifying rounds or, or on the non-TV tables these guys can beat you, you know these guys are knocking three centuries in a row or something you know that's how good they are. The boys feel that they're under more pressure playing here because it's, it's obviously everybody wants to win all the tournaments they enter, but to the Welsh boys it would be special to win the Welsh Open. I don't think it's the pressure of the home crowd because, I mean, there isn't any. It's great to have the support. You've got to delve quite deeply maybe into players' preparations. For this event we would tend to practice in the day in our own club. And then we travel, you know, in the evening for ready for our match. If we're playing at seven o'clock, we'd probably get here at six. And then might be in our first match, we'd be seeing the venue for the first time, and, and you've got to get acclimatised. Whereas in other tournaments, you travel down the day before at least. You stay in a hotel, you go to the venue, and you're practicing. Your preparation's better. Unless now you're a top eight player or a top sixteen player with chance of winning then for them to make a living is very hard. So other players now are diversifying and doing other things. Some have gone in the exhibitions. A lot of them have gone to play poker. Matthew Stevens, he'll probably hate me for saying it, he plays poker big style, you know, he's won a couple of big tournaments. So he looks at it, for him to earn a, a real good living at this now, he's got to be a prolific winner. 
Now, to be a prolific winner, you must go and you must put your four or five hours in every single day on the snooker table. I think with the current crop at the moment, they probably do other things to guarantee themselves their future. Wales has always been uh, brilliant at finding new talent. Young Michael White, he's had a year on the tour this year, and to be fair to him, there's a learning curve, he's struggled a little bit. It'll have done him a lot of good, he's probably going to be off it for next year. But when he comes back then, the year after, and he will be back the year after, he's going to come back a much angrier and better player. Daniel Wells has actually just won a Paul Hunter scholarship. So he's based in Sheffield in the, in the Snooker Academy. They'll be teaching Daniel things like fitness, nutrition, they look into the Q he uses, his Q action, everything in his makeup really that makes that master player. And you know, who knows what Daniel can achieve? Jamie Jones uh, from Leith, who's a, a very talented player and a very strong amateur record. I'm sure they'll be coming up here looking at the top players and they'll be aspiring to come here in years to come and, and win the Welsh Open. I think the game's in excellent shape at the moment. I've got nearly 800 junior members in my club, and if you get quantity, you're going to find within that quality if they get the right guidance. I'm quietly confident the Welsh um, you know, there's a lot of talent coming through. We've already got, you know, there's four of us in the top 30 uh, at the moment anyway, in, in, in the world hopefully. You know, there'll still be uh, a slot still in there and a few coming through. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight belongs to Mark J. Williams. Some interesting thoughts. It is frustrating for the home crowd. We'd all love to have seen Welshman, two Welshmen in the final here at the Newport Centre, but that hasn't been the case, and everyone's watching two Englishmen contesting it as well. We heard your thoughts there, Terry, on why, what the immediate problem is. What about the future? How long before these youngsters come through to join Matthew Stevens, Mark Williams, Ryan Day, Dominic Dale in, in the top 32? Uh, well, I should think that would take a few years. I mean, uh, first of all, they're going to get on the main tour, and when they get there, it's very very similar to the European tour in golf, they all aspire to get on there, when they get on there they realise how tough it is and it's very similar in snooker. But it'll take a few years, and Michael White, as I mentioned, uh, has gone on tour this year and um, we've got Daniel Wells having a good chance to get on next year, Andrew Padgett, they look they're going to qualify through the, the Pius uh, tournament. So we're getting players coming in, we've got nine players on tour this year altogether from Wales, um, but it's only the, the top boys, you know, that are doing better. But Ryan's very close to winning tournaments, mm. you know, he got uh, to the final, of course, against um, Dominic, and he got to a final of another ranking event, so I think his time is very close. Let me ask you one question, i just pick up from a point that was made by, it was Darren, I think, that some of the players are having to do other things now, because the money on the circuit isn't as much as it was ten years ago, is that a problem? I don't really see that. No, I can't see Mark Williams and Ryan Day and uh, not even Matthew Stevens. They're all full-time players. Um, they're not doing anything else. And but is there enough money then for the number 48 in the world to make a full-time living at it? Yeah, but they're not number 48. No, but I'm talking about these youngsters coming through. Um, well, there's money there, but it's like any profession. If you're not successful, you're not going to earn money. I mean, mm -hmm. it's no different from any other game. I mean, uh, you know, the top earners now are, what, three, four hundred thousand pounds they're winning in the year, plus their endorsement money. I mean, it's not bad money, is it? No, it's, it's not, not too at all. bad that. Okay, Terry. Not too far away now. We had an interesting discussion here earlier this afternoon about uh, the old breed, uh, back in the day, back in Terry's day, as to whether it was more difficult then to be successful on the circuit than it is now. Do we give the players of your enough respect compared to the uh, flashy players like Ronnie O'Sullivan these days? And uh, it's something that uh, detained us, an interesting conversation for a couple of minutes or so this afternoon, and that we thought we'd revisit it, because it is an interesting talking point. So Terry, we've seen some great matches uh, this week, but people are always talking about what the game used to be like, you know, in your era. And but in your eyes, how does it compare by today's uh, sort of standard? Oh, it is much better in my day. The players are better, nicer looking, earn more money. <laughs> what do you want? No, no, no. The standards changed dramatically, you know, and the the game has changed dramatically. But but the main thing is the quality of the players now. The top players now like in all sports, have improved tremendously over the years. They play more, they're better potters. You know, mm. There's so much involved, they're full-time players. When in my day you were playing exhibitions, or only a few events, now they're playing competition all the time. And it shows there when they're good now, they're very good. 
was a shot, that was. I used to laugh my head off at Reardon and Cliff Wilson and yourself. You used to play it, play it to the crowd. And why, why was that? Why were there more characters, do you think, in them days than there are now? I think it's because they, they, they were mainly earning a living on the exhibition tour around the clubs. Oh, and yeah. They played the World Championship across the UK and Port Black, and that was it for the season. So they, earned, they were on the road like five, six days a week doing exhibitions, doing some trick shots at the end when you had a fun and a joke in a local club. Um, whereas today the boys don't do much of that because they're on the table practicing or competing in tournaments. So it's a bit unfair to say there's not characters. Oh. <laughs> is that good? Do you like that? I think the pockets that we play on today are pretty tight and the cloths are like lightning, but how, how did they compare? Because you were still a pro in the sort of early and late 90s, really, weren't you, when you retired? So have you seen a change in the conditions and the pocket sizes and that? Yes, there has been a change. I think um, we had spells in my early years when they were a little bit easier and then they tightened them up again. Um, but, but I think the main difference with the tables, the cloth is a little bit more consistent now. And in my day, you know, you'd put your, ha your bridge hand on, on the wood on the side of the table to take a shot. And, and you know, it is hot oh, because really? they didn't used to have the diffusers in those days under the television lights. Um, but in general, it's six pockets, whether a little bit bigger or smaller, and the closets were good in those days, and they are now. I think the main change has really been this style of a game that's played in today's market since the Henry days. He started all off going for everything, yeah. smashing the pack up, and, and, and like scoring big breaks. When in my day, it was more of the rear ends and you know, uh, get what's there. They could do their breaks and long pots. But that wasn't the style of play. It, it was more of, of a tighter game the, than it is today. Do you think the balls have changed pretty much over the years? The mm. balls are far better today, much easier to move them about. You can get more backspin on them because they're a little bit lighter than the older balls. But the, but the main thing is, of course, that when you go into the pack of reds, they tend to split easier. Yeah. And that is, is helping the break building, which everybody likes to see. I think in your area there weren't the, the strength and depth of players that you've got now. Would you agree with that? Well, yes. I mean, in the early rounds in my day, I mean, you, you look at a draw and think, well, you know, I've got a great chance to get in the quarter or semi, and that must not be disrespectful. But uh, in today's market, I mean, you look under the first round, and, and as we've seen the last few years, a lot of the top seeds are getting out first round. Mm. It is practically unheard of in my day, and that's because there's just so many good players. I'm always asked about Steve Davis at his best and Higgins at his best. How good were they in, in, by today's standards? Would they be tournament winners today, do you think, Steve Davis? Um, Higgins? Well, I don't think there's any doubt of that, you know. I mean, still in the top 16 now, and, 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 yeah. he's, and, and he's not 40% of what he used to be. You know, and he's still competing now to a certain extent. I mean, Alex Higgins, Riordan, John Spencer. Uh, I mean, all those players, if they were in today's modern game, they'd adapt and they'd still be winners because people say you're a born winner in life. I'm not sure about that, but um, I, I know one thing. All the great champions, Joe Davis, Pullmans, go back as much as you want to. Yeah. They'd all be successful if they were in today's era, just playing the game in a different way. A fancy game to see, you know, well, the modern against the old. I mean, do you, you fancy a bit of that? Or? Well, you used to hammer me all the time. Like, the best no. I think I ever did practicing no, with you was no, five all ten. No, no. I think if you had a game now, I think I'd come second. You know. well, I'd, I'd like to I think, think that's there, but... I think a, well, a, you know, a long way second. You watch Terry Griffiths. Uh, he's still ranked number 120 in the world, and I think climbing as well, despite not having played a game on the circuit for however long it is. Um, yeah, your day, my day, and all the rest of it, Terry. Um, was it uh, a better game in those days, or are, are we blessed with this current generation, do you think? Um, I, I think the 80s was a wonderful time to be a professional snooker player because the game was developing all around the world. Um, it's already gone there now, and the players have been there many times. What about being a snooker fan? When would be the best time to be watching um, it? A lot of people say that there's more characters in the 80s and 90s than there is now, which, you know, I don't really agree with because I see them backstage and I know what they're like. Have I mean, you look, seen his shoes? Mark Selby, Dominic shoes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, you know, I mean, no, there's a lot of good lads out there today, but I can understand what the people are saying. That you don't get the fun and joke out there you used to. Yeah. Well, Dominic's joined us now. One thing I've been surprised to learn this week is that however much the game has moved on, 
many of these players are still using cues that were made 60, 70 years ago. Yeah, one, one big advantage with old cues, the wood has got softer with age over the years, and they tend to be more responsive with spin uh, than the new cues. You look at length of table screw backs from Sean Murphy, etc. Yeah, OK. Well, the players are out uh, for this, our final session of the week here at the Newport Centre, and a two-frame advantage for Ronnie O'Sullivan. He needs just two more to win the title. And let's join our commentators. A change in the box for this at uh, the final half a session. And so it's good evening for the final time this week to Darren Morgan and to Clive Everton. Good evening, Oliver. Good evening, everyone. To look at it the other way round, of course, Mark Selby has got to win four of the five remaining frames to win his first uh, world ranking title here this evening. Certainly this session has been a great contrast to the afternoon session. There was two hours, 45 minutes play this afternoon, plus a couple of re-racks. I doubt whether O'Sullivan has ever played an eight-frame session as long as that. But uh, this evening, the brakes have been flying in, and O'Sullivan has won three of the first four frames. And Mark wasn't that far away with that last effort. Tempting target there. The yellow and brown so close together. There was a good chance of playing a creative snooker, or a potentially creative snooker, but O'Sullivan didn't quite make it. Be pleased with that little snick off the brown there. It's made this shot a lot more difficult for Ronnie O'Sullivan. <coughs> the right hand side of the table by far the more congested. That was the value to Selby of that flick. Decent defence by O'Sullivan in the circumstances. He was in trouble. Down with our cue ball going in behind the yellow and the brown. Straightforward safety now for Ronnie. ball over the awkward side but not a great length 
and therefore Selby not under the pressure that he would have been if Sullivan had found a better length. Mistake. Yes, but has he got away with it? We know the cue ball will slide past the blue to this red and the yellow pocket, but he'd have much preferred playing a red to the left black. But I think all of them are covered. It's just going to be the red from distance. safety mistake that uh, Selby made. He did have uh, an easier return to ball than that. But he was trying to get the cue ball Four. behind yellow and brown. Five. A little bit short there with the cue ball. If this pink goes to the right corner, he might decide to play it, but he could roll through the blue, leave himself half ball on the red to the left of the two. So he's done so in pot in this next red, which is the furthest over from the pink. Play the little cannon Ten. to leave yourself on that pink to the right corner. That's well played. He's a different player tonight to this afternoon. He looks like he's got his head in the game. Well, he's getting more chances, for one thing. Selby kept uh, the match very tight this afternoon the first six frames anyway. Seventeen. Eighteen. O'Sullivan did get in with 108 in the last frame of the afternoon to level at four all. Coming into this final session. Twenty four. Twenty five. O'Sullivan has a plan to work away at that cluster round the black. Thirty one. Thirty-two. He's played that one to perfection. Black spot occupied. Thirty-nine. So black on the 
highest available spot. 40. In this case, the brown. Forty-six. Promising lead, but still plenty to do before he clinches this frame. Forty-seven. Big shot, this one. Going to be able to miss the cannon on the red. Well, I don't think he is anyway, so this is going to have to go in. That was the only problem with that one. Cubo's got trapped behind the one red, so he has got this pink to left center. It's a real dodgy one to be taken on at this stage. Right, Darren. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 54. It was a dodgy one, but uh, he's playing so well. He fancied his chance of knocking it in and leaving himself on this red from distance. Selby refuses the pot because. There wasn't a colour anywhere near that red. So I'll be up against it now, not just with this shot, but the match situation. 7-5 down, 54 to nil down. Had O'Sullivan been well behind, he would have played a safety to open the cluster. But as he's 54 in front, he keeps it tight. They just never stop rolling. <laughs> Not on this cloth, anyway.
Well, again, Mark's got all good queuing on this shot. Me trying to get it either in behind the yellow and the brown or behind the pink. And that one's gone a little bit wrong. So, other than the awkward cue in that he's been rescued a little bit with that shot, but this red is so close to this left corner, you can't imagine the form Ronnie O'Sullivan is showing that he will miss this. Well, I didn't think he'd miss it either, Darren, but uh, the fact that he did showed uh, just how tricky it was when that awkward bridging, even for somebody as good as O'Sullivan. One. Whichever shot he elects to play, it's not easy. He'd love that blue to slide past the green to the green pocket, but pink one. he's electing to take the pink. Doesn't need to go for the pink, mind. There's still enough points on the table. He could play a little snooker. And that's what he tried. And he'll be disappointed with that one. Sullivan's got him there. Inch perfect. Glancing escape off the top red. Power and a miss. Ronnie O'Sullivan, four. Yeah, okay. I do love it, Mike Clive, when they come and have a little look there, because there's no way in a fit he was going <laughs> to play it from there. It, this was always going back. Okay, Ronnie. the snooker but hasn't managed to leave O'Sullivan at distance this is frame ball <laughs> Selby needs a snooker already and uh, is go to fall three down with four to play. Six. Seven. Ronnie O'Sullivan, seven, on the frame. Ronnie O'Sullivan now within a frame of his third Welsh Open title and leads Mark Selby by eight frames to five. Five frames out of six for Ronnie O'Sullivan to put himself within touching distance. One more required. And uh, Dominic, we talked at length with Terry about what's changed in Ronnie O'Sullivan's game this evening. What is it you think has changed? 
Well, he's just scoring so well. Um, before in the afternoon session, he was uh, breaking over from a bunch of reds and, and not landing on anything quite a lot of the time. But tonight, the reds are splitting well. There was one uh, frame earlier on this evening when he had to put a great long red to keep the break going, which he did. Uh, Can and the black landed on it and, and made that wonderful hundred break. And just playing so well tonight. The frames are going how he wants them to go. They're not well. Yeah, the frame times are quicker, aren't mm. they? That we've got we've got frames under ten minutes all of a sudden. Yeah. Is that because? Ronnie O'Sullivan's playing better, or is Ronnie playing better because the frame times are quicker? Do you see what I mean? Well, they're, they're quicker because Ronnie's winning the frames um, and scoring so heavily, so that obviously they're, they're, they're passing much quickly, much more quickly. But, but it helps uh, the other way, doesn't it? That, that that's the pace he's, that, that he's dictating in the match. Well, Ronnie's now. dictating the play, so therefore uh, Mark Selby is the one on the back foot with his safety shots all the time because Ronnie's putting them in trouble if uh, if, if Ronnie does break down and. Uh, and Mark Selby is not bossing the safety exchanges. Take me, Terry, into the mind of Mark Selby at this point. Well, if you're not careful out there against the Sullivan in this fall, you feel like a bit of a cat toss, to be honest with you. you know. it's, um, it's tough because he's playing so well and you're sitting out for a long time. Um, he's got a lot to do now. And we're talking about the man that you described as the best player in the world this season on form. He has been, hasn't he, Mark Selby? Yes, I think it would be fair to say he's, he's been playing well, especially lately, but um, when he comes up against the Sullivan on form, uh, he's like a steamroller. Selby has earned £200,000 this season in prize money. The worst that can happen to him tonight is that he walks away with another £17,500. The £35,000 first prize does look beyond him at the moment, but if he can win a, a couple of frames, then it would be match back on. I think if it had just been a question of potting that red, O'Sullivan wouldn't have missed it, but he was just needing a slight angle to run the cue ball round off the two cushions for the black. One. So that's the first late lane that Ronnie has thrown Mark. Can't have a feel if Ronnie had knocked that red in. That might have been his chance to wrap this up. Mark will be happy though. Eight. Nine. Yes, yeah, Selby's a very good fighter with very good nerve. Prevailed in three consecutive 6 5 finishes on his way to winning the Masters 16. at Wembley last month. Seventeen. really unfortunate because he couldn't have hit them 84. any better. He's at that cue ball about as hard as he could possibly hit it. He's caught the reds where he wanted. He has got this red to the right corner but it's not easy. The pocket will be out of vision if he attempts it. The so-called blind pocket And something's put him off. Mark Selby, 
24. Overcut, but has left nothing. Yes, and he looks really amused, Ronnie. He's thinking, oh, that's two poor shots Mark's played and got away with, but I'm sure he'd have preferred Mark to have missed and left him nothing than a frame winning break from his early missed red. Well, Sullivan was just shuffling his feet there in a way that was uh, amusing a section of the crowd. The soft shoe shuffle isn't going to help him, though. Not for the way he queued up Clive to this, I think he can he can hit half the cue ball. He'd have to be playing it with right hand side, but there might be some value in him going for this red. Down this cushion, the right hand side, you take him off the side cushion, off the top cushion. And you can see he can get to it. And he'd be playing the black in the same pocket. Turned it down. I thought, Darren, that uh, if he played the shot that you suggested and got to the left of the black, then he couldn't have left anything to the right middle but maybe uh, the shot with side was just uh, too difficult for him to attempt as he sits on an 8-5 lead difficult red to left middle though for Selby One. Good shot at any time, especially so since he's been uh, so outplayed this evening. Oh. Mark Selby won. Well, that spoils it all. It's all about this first shot. Could see him try and pop this red and cannon into the pink. Leave yourself a shot to the right corner or on the blue to the yellow pocket. Well, he took his eyes off that one. Well, simply as a pot. You won't miss uh, any easier ones than that, but uh, he was so preoccupied with position that he just uh, forgot about it. One.
Eight. That's uh, Vicky Lake in the middle there, Mark Selby's girlfriend. She plays pool for Ireland. Fifteen. Sixteen. Salby himself, uh, an accomplished pool player. He won the English Pool Association version of the World Championship, although I have to say there were no Americans, no Filipinos in it. Two particularly strong nations. Twenty-one. Far from the best result that he could have had from that split. Mark Selby, 21. That was difficult. That was close. I thought that he'd uh, got every chance of leaving O'Sullivan nothing if he missed. And would have been on the pink had he got it. Well, as it turned out, Selby didn't get getting quite enough behind the black but it was still a difficult red for O'Sullivan One so he left the red easy enough to the left centre now you do feel that Mark must wrap this frame up with this opportunity Thirteen. So just this simple short range red needed. Nineteen. To get another frame on the scoreboard. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. This effort will reduce Selby's arrears to eight-six. If he could win one more frame, 
it would be only 8-7 and uh, 35. there would be some pressure on O'Sullivan then. 36. Although I have to say that O'Sullivan has no great record of losing from uh, several frames in front. All Selby can do, though, is stick to his game, stick to his method. 43. <laughs> 43 on the frame. Mark Selby yes, keeps Johnny O'Sullivan's score in that frame and it reduces O'Sullivan's lead to 8-6. Terry and Dominic are watching this with great interest. Terry, thoughts? Um, few chances gone there for Ronnie O'Sullivan. Uh, Clive mentioned I don't think he'd be panicking at the moment, but another frame for Selby, and it may be a different uh, story out there. Yes, absolutely. That's uh, exactly right what Terry says. It's uh, it's just a case. Ronnie missed a couple of opportunities in that frame. He'll be uh, keen to sort of get amongst them again in this frame if he can, and this time make no mistake. I think Mark Selby, having won that frame and, <clears throat> and reduced the deficit to just two frames will start believing in himself again now and he'll know he can put Ronnie under a lot of pressure if he could just win this next frame. Isn't, isn't Ronnie O'Sullivan so different from the man that we saw this afternoon with his glass of hot water warming his hands and the little bit of paper and scratching <laughs> about and all that? It's amazing how much he changed, isn't it, Terry? Well, he just doesn't like sitting in his chair and, and you know, there's no snooker professional that does uh, like sit in his chair, but he's worse than most. When he's made to sit out a lot, with a lot to say, I feel like he had this afternoon. Uh, one of the most revealing comments I think he's Mark made this week break. was in here last night after he'd won his semi-final, that the sense of duty he feels to the crowd when they give him this sort of backing, that uh, that's as frustrating as anything as not being able to deliver for the crowd here. That will make him feel a little better now, won't it? Odd, well, the way he's played tonight. I mean, look, the crowd love him, whatever he does, because even if he's not playing at his best, there's always, always there's something happening out there. And he's, uh, Done a bit, but hasn't yet completed the job. Selby's break-off shot brought the end red down further than he would have wished. It's cuttable to the right middle. One. Just look at that cue ball's carrying on travelling. It has to be said that these tables this week have played very quick here at Newport. And very responsive to spin. Six. Fourteen. Fifteen. Well, this wasn't the way he played 32. it, but he's landed on this red to the green pocket. Missed it. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 22. So we've seen a little bit of early nerves from Ronnie. The red had a long way to travel, but it was uh, pretty well dead straight. So uh, that was a surprising miss. <laughs> so 
Selby misses a similar shot. They don't get any easier when the immediate issue is winning or losing. Less pressure in the early part of the match. Only a negative safety on there. It'll suit Selby a lot more than O'Sullivan if this turns into a slowish sort of frame. He really wanted that tight on that top cushion. This makes this very easy now for Mark Salvi to get the cue ball back behind the black. He's just got to watch he doesn't push any reds over any of the pockets. He was so tight to the black, it wouldn't have mattered if he had. There's a killer shot by Ronnie last time. If he'd got that cue ball right under that cushion, the best Mark could have done was rolled up to the cluster of reds. But Ronnie's in a lot of trouble now. There you can see, just wanted another three or four inches on that cue ball. I'm not sure that that was the red that O'Sullivan played to hit. I thought that he played on the one in the middle of the table, about half bore, which would have brought the cue ball back towards the black cushion. Bed of the table, just six. So he said yesterday of his recent matches, when I needed to perform, I did. It referred to his 
6-4 semi-final victory over Stephen Hendry. 12. Yesterday. And also to his uh, three tight victories in the Masters at Wembley. 13. Seventeen. Eighteen. Starting to get in full flow now, Mark Salvi. So 21. these will be nerve wracking moments now for Ronnie. Ten, fifteen minutes ago, I'm sure he thought this was all over by the shouting. All of a sudden 22. now, it's match back on. So he'll be demonstrating once more his fine temperament. 29. Thirty. Thirty-eight. He develops a red and brings the pink into play. Forty four. Fifty one. Needs red colour and one more red. Fifty six. Ronnie was not good one. Okay. 
blue and one more red needed. Sixty-two. Not quite what he was looking for. Wanted to get the cue ball past the left-hand side of the yellow and leave uh, this red much straighter. Does he go for this, Darren, or does he close it up with a snooker? I think with the way he's played all day, I think he'll be... Closing it up with a snooker, but the way he's had a little look at the angle there would suggest he's going to go for it. But it's a big shot. Well, he did. Mark's he's had a good cue ball, and the red has gone safe, so I think there's more damage done. There was always a chance that it could have gone in. If it had, Ronnie would have been requiring snookers. Yes, Selby's choice of shot influenced by the fact that the other red was safe. Selby's 62 break has put him 40 in front. But he knows he could still lose this frame. O'Sullivan waiting for a chance to clinch frame and match. Slider could reach the popping angle. Great shot. Very little room to get Six. past the green to reach the potting angle. But Selby made it. Seven. And not only has he won this frame, but he's won it in impressive style. Ten. Twelve. Fifteen. Great stuff then from the 24-year-old from Leicester, showing just 90. how much his game has matured and improved this season. 24. He was 8-5 down. 12. But by winning two consecutive frames, be 24. he has reduced his lead six, to 8-7. It's not quite time to wheel out the statistics about this tournament and the fact that the finals go the distance, but uh, we'll save that for the next time we get to speak, because trust me, there's some strange figures working. Um, but looking much, much better. Let's just say that, shall we, at this point, for Mark Selby, Terry. It's much better because uh, Solomon's missing his chances and Mark's snapping them up. I mean, he, what, he made 22 there, missed the red down into the bottom right corner that was almost straight. I mean... Uh, if he's flying, he'd never miss those, you know, and he's, he's a few flutters coming in there, I think. Yeah, Ron doesn't flutter, does he? No, not very often. Um, he's struggling a little bit at the moment. He's missing a couple of opportunities to close out the match. Um, 
I don't know, maybe when he reached eight frames he thought, job's done here, I'm eight, uh, eight five up and uh, I fancy winning and maybe he's just taken a bit of edge off him, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, that, but that sort of thing doesn't happen to Ronnie O'Sullivan, surely he'd stay focused? Well, yes, I mean, that, can't, that sort of thing you, you can't afford to let creep into your game. If You can't afford to think when you're one frame away that you've done the job because you still need one good frame. And Ronnie, as you can see, he needs one good frame. He's just lost the last two. Yeah, it, it's, it's something special, isn't it, to lose five frames out of six and then get out of your seat and grind out a couple? Well, yes, but it's all it's a circumstance with both players, you know. I mean, you could have a swing now with uh, Selby winning like a good few frames on the trot, but make no mistake of it, they suffer out there. I don't care who they are, a Sullivan, anybody. There's nobody that doesn't suffer out there under the pressure, and more so when somebody's coming back at you when you've got a good lead. Yes, and some players enjoy putting pressure on, don't they, in this sort of situation? I think Selby just be glad to be still in there because, you know, like a few frames ago, it looked, let's be honest, we all thought he was going to be all over. But um, he, he'll be pretty relaxed at the moment until he gets, like, perhaps another frame and then it'll, it'll all reverse again. But uh, it's made for a good final tonight, I'm pleased, because uh, the standard this afternoon wasn't really, you know, up to what we expect from two no. players in form. It's too much to ask for anything terribly entertaining from here on in, is it? Would it get a little bit cagey now, do you think, Dominic? Um, no, I still think Ronnie could make a big hundred break in the next frame, but uh, I think the pressure will be on Mark Selby now because he's got a realistic chance of winning this tournament. Maybe at 8-5 down, he thought, it's a lot to ask, but it's, it's a realistic prospect now at 8-7, and he'll know that, and I think there'll be pressure, just as much pressure, on Mark Selby as on Ronnie O'Sullivan. Yes, there will. Uh, pleasure on everybody here. Uh, even us here, Ronnie is still out of the arena, incidentally. Mark Selby is back in, though, and uh, in his chair. Maybe that indicates which of the two is more eager to get on with things out there now. But uh, I think we're, well, no, we're still waiting for Ronnie O'Sullivan to come back, make him wait, make him stew a little bit. And, uh, what's, what's it like in this situation, Dominic, where you are sat in your chair waiting for your opponent to return? <laughs> well, you, in Mark Selby's uh, position, you just want uh, the next frame to get underway quickly. You don't want to be left waiting out there. You can't wait to try and get back in the match and make it eight all. Let's get on with the match. That's what you're thinking. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. You settle down now, please. O'Sullivan has spent uh, an extra couple of minutes composing himself. But that's not the best break off shot. He's hoping the brown is going to come to his rescue, but it doesn't. No, and this is a realistic chance for Mark Selby. Important this red, he'll have a natural angle just to come down for the black. He might even elect to go back for the blue. It was close, he played for the black. Well, not an absolute sitter, but uh, the sort you've got to pot at this stage of the proceedings. Yes, Clive, and the way he played in the last frame, there's no way you could have seen him missing that. So maybe Dominic has got a point. Ronnie O'Sullivan beat Stephen Hendry in the 2004 Welsh Open final from two down with three to play. In the 2005 final, he beat Steve Davis from three down with four to play. So he's done it. So he knows it can be done to him. the effects of Selby missing uh, the red to middle just a couple of minutes ago is that uh, he thereby lost momentum. 
cubicle only about three inches off the bought cushion, but he could still cue it pretty well. Electing to play as if he snookered. Doesn't want to play a safety off the bunch. But the cue ball has slid off the bunch and red to left corner is on. One. So, another chance for Ronnie. Mind, there's only a couple of reds out. He's going to have to start developing that pack. Could have caught that black a little bit thinner into the pocket. He'd have took more of the cluster of reds. Still on Eight. this red. Nine. Sixteen. Seventeen. That was a good shot. Into a partially closed pocket. This one's far from easy. Twenty-five. He's found the pocket, but he's lost the cue ball. He has landed on this brown to this right corner, but again, that is a big shot. But knowing Ronnie as we know him, if it's dead straight, I think he'll be going for it. Dividends if he knocked it in. This is the uh, Salbiera from his safety. 37. Went to leave the cue ball nestled in the bunch, but slid off it. And O'Sullivan has been at the table ever since. 38. <laughs> Precision cannon. 45. 46. Another cannon knowing that he was going to develop another red. 47. Closing in on the title now. 47. Yes, as you said that, he's played a stinker of a shot really. 53. He needed to caught that black into the middle of this pocket. It hit the far jaw and obviously took the pace out of the cue ball. So for one split second it looked like it might have been all over. But he's going to have to wait for another chance. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 53. 
useful but not conclusive. Good safety as well. Salby all too well aware that if he gets this one wrong, it could be his last shot of the night. I don't think he played it that way. I think he's given Ronnie a shot at this red. He's electing to play the one below the pink. That's the one that will guarantee him if he misses some kind of a safety shot. And he has missed. The red's gone very close that middle. I think the brown's come to his rescue. Not at all inviting. Thing is, Clive, even if Ronnie had made that red, he wouldn't have been on a colour. I don't know where the cue ball is. Very good. Very cool. Whereas uh, O'Sullivan, I thought, showed some signs of anxiety at his last visit to the table. Very eager to get over the line. Red's worth more of a look from that angle. Pretty well a straight shot. But not as easy as it might look on screen. One. in time for Ronnie O'Sullivan. Obviously Mark's still got to keep himself together but that was a great opening red. And even though Ronnie's got a big lead in this frame he knows Six. he's had a chance to wrap this match up. And is there another one that's got away? Still a lot of work to be done but Mark will be chuffed that he's uh, been given another lifeline. So he'll be kept in this frame with an excellent safety when he was in deep trouble.
can't get through to this red. 14. Just past the black. I don't think he'd be too happy with that one. Obviously, he can play the one to the right of the black. And he's got a shot at the one behind the pink. But it's whether he can get through to this other red. Whether well, you can see just about. Fifteen. But has the one red come in front of the one that he was intending to be on? Twenty-one. It certainly has. disappointing club because I, th I honestly believe that he felt that he's going to clear up then take this match into a final frame potted the pink nice and clean but um, couldn't control where the other balls were going a minute's thinking time now Mark Selby, 21. He reduces arrears to 32. His safety, though, puts O'Sullivan under no pressure. Sullivan got the cue ball more or less where he wanted, but um, the red has doubled back across the table. It wasn't easy, though. A lot of pressure on that one and what's made it worse I was gonna say what's made it worse for Mark was the red going so far near to the green pocket but uh, that green's come to Mark's rescue and nestled nicely on that cue ball so <laughs> Ronnie's in all kinds of trouble here what a run of the ball that was because uh, having missed the red it looked apparent to a gooseberry that O'Sullivan was going to have an easy starter and uh, already 32 in front as he came to the table the chances were that he was going to close out the frame and match that was all he could do with it Interesting little duel this. Neither player wants to leave his opponent a shot from which he can leave the cue ball in Bork and the red up the black spot end.
O'Sullivan didn't lay his intended snooker on that red, though. So Selby has got the first uh, potentially creative safety in. Just sort of say if he could get through to this red, he might have been forced into having a go at it, but it looks a little bit too tight. <laughs> the red behind the black. Uh, does go but it's one of those uh, missable cutbacks Good pot and was concentrating so hard on it that uh, there was no concentration left over to get the cue ball out of Bork for choice of uh, easy yellow or easy brown. Yellow onto the middle, but uh, three. It wasn't a very friendly angle. Couldn't get on his next red. We're we trying to get this cue ball in right behind that green. Mark Selby three. Another excellent safety. It's a very strong department of Selby's game. Hasn't left anything easy. One. That's beautifully played by Selby. Sullivan's 53-point lead has been progressively whittled away. Nine. Now down to 20. The interesting thing, Clive, that Ronnie over the last three frames has had chances to put this frame and match away. Obviously this red goes by you, so he's going to pot the red. you probably get a cannon on the other one. Cue ball off two cushions. 
Back for the black. He might be able to just cannon that red off the one cushion and stay on this black. But this is a great chance now. O'Sullivan, usually so authoritative in clinching winning positions, hasn't been this evening. Something. Well, that's about the worst place he could have finished on the pink. O'Sullivan's feeling it. He's feeling the anguish of having a much desired victory snatched away. Marcel, 17. Yeah, a little shot that one as well. He's tried to take this left cushion out of the equation for Ronnie, which I think he has done. So Ronnie's going to have to play off two cushions here. Side top cushion. Trying to hit the red full in the face. Well, he's hit it thin. And he's got to hope this blue comes to his rescue, and I don't think it has. So here's a chance for Selby to level the match at eight all. One. Came back a little too far. Wrong side of the blue. Done with another 12 inches or so of run in the cue ball there, particularly as some precision is required to get on the green. Eight. A nicely executed stun run through. making sure he didn't miss the green. He forgot a bit about the position. He needed to get the cue ball out of Bork for the easy brown. Hope springs anew in O'Sullivan's chest as far as this frame's concerned. Only to be dashed. Right brown to middle. From the line from Leicester. Twenty. And only the pink needed. More of a cut than he would like. For the sixth time in ten years at the Welsh Open, we go to a deciding frame. And dare I mention at this point, that on the two occasions Ronnie O'Sullivan has won this, he did it on a decisive frame. Uh, so, who do you back, Terry, at this stage? Do you go with the man who's won, what, three on the bounce now? Or do you go with Ronnie O'Sullivan, the uh, British talent to lift a cue? Even money, I think it's... I think it's even, you know, you can't really call it. One frame, either one gets in and... Uh, 
I mean, Selby will feel a lot better at the moment than he did three frames ago, but he's still eight on. He could have decided to win his first ranking event. That's a lot on him. And it, but you t look at this, the way he put this brown away. He's not feeling it at all, is he? I think he was so disappointed with the green he played that he decided to play that brown, no matter where it was. I mean, what a shot. I mean, the pop was good enough, but the backspin he got and the pace and the cue ball to get out for the blue, something special. Even money, Dominic, now? Well, yes, eight all. It's a one-frame shootout. It doesn't matter that Selby's won three frames in a row to draw level. It's, that's by the by now. It's eight all. It's a one-frame shootout. But can you believe it's eight all? That, that, that mistake he made and the white finishing right by the green and snooking Ronnie on an easy red should have been all over. So he's very lucky as well, but he's, he's taken his chance well and he's, he's held, his, held himself together terrifically well to make that clearance. Are you sure momentum counts for nothing at this point? No, I don't think it does. It's eight all. It's, uh, it's just a one-frame shootout. It's all, it's, there's a lot of pressure on both of these guys, and whoever holds it together for one frame will win. What's running through Ronnie O'Sullivan's mind at the moment, Terry? Um, he's thinking about the chances that's gone by the last three frames, but he, he'll be wise enough to clear his head away yeah. from there and get They're dangerous get thoughts, ready. aren't they? Well, I think he'll get rid of them. He'll be ready for this, and if he gets a chance, he may well pounce on it. Who knows? Let's see then. That roar will tell you that Mark Selby is back in the arena. Let me leave you with one last statistic. 24 finals. This is Ronnie O'Sullivan's 25th ranking tournament final. He's won 17 of them. A remarkable Thank conversion you, rate. Mark Selby yet Mark to Selby win to a ranking tournament. Will this now? be his first? A time for skill, a time for composure, above all, a time for nerve. Twitchy one. He caught that a lot thicker than he'd have liked. I don't think he's done much damage. Played that a lot, lot thinner. If Mark was to pot from here, he's going to have to pull a good one out of the bag. I might see him take this red onto the right corner. I think the black goes in there as well. So the only red he could leave on is the one to the right to the black. Way out. It's enough now. Settle down, please. Yes, you missed this one by a long way, but I think Ronnie now will play the shot that I was on about with Mark. Try and go for this red, the right corner, and play for the black. There's another chance. One, albeit there's only half a chance. An initial red from O'Sullivan that, which could pay huge dividends. Nine. He's got in first in the previous three frames. Sixteen. Hasn't done enough and landed up losing them. 17. I think we'll be 
seen him off this black, going at this pack of reds. O'Sullivan's uh, attempt to open the bunch fails. 24. So we're not going to see a repeat of the 147 maximum that uh, O'Sullivan made in the deciding frame of his 9 8 win over Selby. 12. In the UK Championship semi final. Max Selby 24, Max Selby 5. O'Sullivan must have fouled the blue with his body. Let's see it. Well, very difficult to see Bold. at that angle. But uh, Irene Williams, the referee, was in perfect position to see it. This is not so much the five. I think he's left this red to the right corner. It's a distance. But at the moment, Mark Selby's got all the momentum in his favour. He would really have loved the cue ball to thread its way round behind the back of that blue to continue the break. Mark Selby won. It was a good red, though. So at the worst, it uh, gave him the chance to lay the snooker. It is a double on, but you can't imagine he'd even think about taking it on at this stage of this final. He's good at doubles, the eight ball pool. Quiet behind the scenes, please. Let's put him in good stead with that. But this would be such a crazy shot, I feel. At this time, I think he'll try and get a good cue ball back down in the bulk area. Strange on Clive, he's given the advantage really to Ronnie now. Sullivan can easily get the cue ball away to Bork, but not behind a Bork colour. Sullivan won five frames out of six to go eight five up, but for once in his career, he's finding it very difficult to get over the line. It isn't usually a problem for him when he's uh, a few frames in front.
72 seconds to play that shot, but uh, in the end played it well. safety but has got away with it I think he's due a little bit of Renault Mark Selby has got got away with a couple of shots over the last couple of frames but he's a very lucky boy there Well, there are no thoughts about uh, entertaining the crowd in this frame, although they're entertained enough by the drama of the situation. A deciding frame finish at eight all. Apart from all the skill involved, it's a time to keep a cool head in terms of shot selection, particularly when the shot isn't obvious at first glance. as it happened but uh, O'Sullivan was expecting that red to cannon another ball to act as a stopper tense times This is not the sort of frame that O'Sullivan likes best. Leighton, Mark Selby's girlfriend, watching intently. As an international pool player, she's got some inkling of uh, the nervous tension that Selby is feeling. Just look at the red behind the pink then. I think he thought for one minute he'd left it to right centre. One turn right in the end. 
But the red would just go to left middle. So it was a careless safety from O'Sullivan. If Selby does win, I can't recall O'Sullivan ever losing before Five. from such a position of strength. Three up, four to play. That awaits the winner. Six. He's going through it, trying to stay calm. Ten. Pink to middle. Selby seems fully in command of his emotions. 16. And his technique. 17. It's a sellout crowd, but you could hear a pin drop. Okay. Twenty three. Hands feeling a little sweaty. I'm not surprised. It's the tension more than the warmth. Thirty. Sullivan knows that this is far from an easy match clinching chance for Selby. But he dearly wants him to miss and miss soon. Just scraped in. 31. Still nicely on the pink. I wonder if he'll take the chance here, Clive, and try and screw off this pink and develop them two towards the middle pocket. All depends whether he feels that the top one of the two will go if he positions the cue ball in the correct place. Well, if it won't, it's an ideal chance to play the cannon. But from his shot choice, he believes that red is potable. 37. Providing he gets the cue ball in exactly the right position. Oh. 
38. Which he did. 20 in front. Through this patiently compiled 38. If he could have got the cue ball across a little further, he would have improved his chance of potting red to left corner. Circumstances, but good pot for position on a balk colour, and thence to the red in the middle of the balk cushion. Okay. Forty-eight. Still needs two more reds. This sellout crowd engrossed in this. This break has required a lot of thought. It contained several difficulties. Mark Selby, 48. It comes to an end with that tricky rod, but he did play it in such a way as to give himself every chance of covering that red by means of the green if it didn't drop. Yeah, so. I mean, so the way he played earlier on, he might have punched that around the table and standing behind the blue, so that tells you how confident he's fe feeling. Ronnie just shifted that black off the red. He's no, he knows he's going to need everything if that opportunity arises. O'Sullivan, 30 behind. Can he pull this deciding frame out of the fire? One thing, Clive, he's going to be really upset with himself knowing how many chances he's had to close this match out. That's a course. If he gets beat, if he does land up winning it, then he'll forget about the chances that came and went. Well, it was worth a try. There was at least a 50-50 chance that red would have uh, run safe. Would have been on the black had he got it. And here, one and a chance for a counter-attack from O'Sullivan. Yes, but what an audible brown this is. This is a test of his cue in. Particularly as he's been frozen out for such long periods. Five. Wants an angle on the black Six. from which he can develop the last red. <laughs> Nine. 
not quite. 13. Now we're settled at 13. With the cue ball disappearing. Four. Okay, settle down now, please. Into the middle pocket. I think O'Sullivan took on the double in frustration and disappointment for not having developed the last red properly. One. Guilt edged match winning chance for Selby. He only needs the yellow. Five. Sullivan needs one snooker. And now that Selby has added the green, ten. He's over the line, barring three snookers. We've seen a marvellous recovery tonight. Ronnie O'Sullivan won five frames out of six to go eight five up. But Mark Selby from three down with four to play produced an epic recovery to win by nine frames to eight. It's his first world ranking title. He wins £35,000, and now the jester from Leicester will be laughing all the way to the bank. Ladies and gentlemen, your champion, Mark Selby! <laughs> Please welcome your presentation party, Mike Dunn, Director of World Professional Billiards and Snooker Association, accompanied by Nigel Walker, Head of Sport at BBC Wales. Your runner-up and winner of the silver medal, Ronnie O'Sullivan! And now, the winner of the gold medal, the trophy, and the title, 2008 Welsh Open champion, the jester from Leicester, Mark Selby! Ladies and gentlemen, on your behalf, uh, word with both runner up and Welsh Open champion Ronnie O'Sullivan. Congratulations, first of all. Highest break. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> you came out tonight at four all, all guns blazing. Everything seemed to be going your way. Well, that's just the way I play. You know, I play an attacking game and I try to t uh, grab the game by the scruff of the neck. And um, I kind of got, got away with that a little bit earlier on, but. Mark was, um, you know, very tactical and, you know, never really allowed me to play, really. He kind of uh, kept me under wraps and, you know, that's the way it goes. A great comeback by him. Yeah, fantastic, yeah. 
but you've been champion of Wales twice before. Yeah, it, I mean, it doesn't mean nothing to me at the moment because obviously I've just lost the match, so I'm obviously disappointed. But, you know, I love coming here to Wales. You know, the Welsh fans have been fantastic and uh, I love playing here and, you know, they're a great crowd and um, I'm, I hope they enjoyed the day. Ladies and gentlemen, Ronnie O'Sullivan. Mark. May I say, first of all, Mark, what a fantastic 12 months you've had. I go back to Sheffield, April and May, and you reach the final of the World Championship. What a feat. Yeah, I mean, who'd have thought this? I mean, like you say, 12 months on. I mean, 18 months ago, I was still in the qualifiers at Prestatyn, and now, 18 months later, I've got two major titles under my belt. World Championship final. Can't complain. Just over a month ago, you won the Masters at Wembley. That's right, yeah, and I mean, I played well in the final. I didn't play as good today as what I did in the Masters final, but I mean, I just dug deep and wasn't really queuing that well, so I obviously had to go to plan B and obviously try and scrap it out, and thankfully enough, I come through it. Would you have settled for a four-all uh, scoreline after the opening eight frames today? Yeah, I think so. I think it was about right. I mean, overall, I think scoring-wise, everybody could see Ronnie was obviously the better player as far as scoring-wise goes, but... Like I say, obviously, I wasn't scoring, but my safety play seemed to keep me in there and just seemed to keep nicking and pinching frames there and there. And then Ronnie came out flying tonight, winning two frames in no time at all. Yeah, I mean, I thought he was going to run away with it. I mean, the way he plays like that, if he's playing like that all the while, there's not many people out there what can stop him. And like I say, I, I nicked a good frame to go 6-5 instead of 7-4 when it was looking like 7-4. And had a good chance in the net frame to go 6-all and I'd have been chuffed to bits with 2-all at the interval. But... Not to be. I mean, went 8-5 down and obviously just let me arm go and managed to come through. What were your thoughts when you were 8-5 down? Uh, I just thought, just try and obviously enjoy it and just try and play my shots and try and loosen up a little bit. But obviously, uh, the more I loosened up, the more I kept missing even more. So I just tried to obviously just stay positive and play the balls. Your first victory in a ranking tournament happens in Wales. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please put your hands together for Mark Selby, Welsh Open Champion 2008. Fantastic scenes here. What a great finish as well. Dominic Dale alongside me. This has been coming, hasn't it, for Mark Selby? Yeah, I mean, he really is the man in form this season. He's just won the... Uh, the Masters at Wembley played fantastic, won 10-3 in the final, came here brimful of confidence. I mean, to be 8-5 down, there were so many twists and turns in that final session, and he's came through, won four in a row against Ronnie O'Sullivan, of all people, won a fantastic... And what a great break in that deciding frame. Tremendous performance from Mark Selby. Terry Griffiths, pay tribute, first of all, to, to Mark Selby, and not just what he's done tonight, but what he's done in the last 12 months. Um, well, he's, he's the most improved player on the circuit over the last few years, and at the moment he is the form player. OK, he hasn't got the sublime skills of Ronnie O'Sullivan when he gets in the balls, but he's a tough match player, as he showed you in this final. John Higgins told us earlier this week, didn't he, that he felt that the only man that could stop Mark Selby at the Crucible was Ronnie O'Sullivan. Uh, we see him now holding this trophy. What price we see him holding another trophy before the season's out? Well, I mean, I can't wait for the World Championships. I hope I'm there. But uh, Mark Selby really is going to be the man to beat. He's absolutely right on form at the moment, and he's so consistent at the moment. He's such a tough player to beat. His safety game, his potting and break building, all the facets of snooker are right there with Mark Selby at the moment. Does he have the sort of game, Tay, that lends itself to consistency to winning tournament after tournament? Um, certainly so. I mean, he's, he's on the crest of a wave. The confidence is there. The World Championships is long sessions, long frames, and that will suit his style of game. We wondered all day, didn't we, where the turning point in this match was going to come, the decisive moment. Did it come right at the end of that very final frame when Ronnie O'Sullivan took on that double? Would you have taken on this double? Um, I, I didn't. I thought he could take the double on, but he rushed into the shot. I think that was the problem. If he had given it some thought, I think a disappointment about not kissing the red out. He just went down and played the double and, and, and left it up, and the game was over. Would you have taken that one on, Dominic? Well, I mean, Ronnie was 8-5 up. He's lost three frames in a row. Yes, it was last chance to lose. If it goes in, he's got a great chance to clear up, so maybe I would have done. That's Ronnie O'Sullivan, though, isn't it, I suppose? That's what you get for, for good or bad. If that had gone in, he'd have been a genius, and maybe he'd have been over there now with a trophy. Yes, absolutely. It's a chance he'd take. It was a chance that Ronnie thought was on. He went for it, didn't go in. Unfortunately, he left the red on. 
and it's match over. It's incredible, isn't it? Here he is now signing autographs, Mark Selby. 18 months ago, none of these would have known who he was, would they? And it's, it's been a, a huge meteoric rise, hasn't it? And, and in that time as well, he's completely taken his game to pieces and put it back together, Terry. Well, he changed his tec the technical side of his game. He's always he's played this style of game, uh, you know, since I've seen him many, many years ago. But he was so slow coming through the ranks. He seemed to slip around 40, 50, got up to the 30s a few times and slip back down. And then he shot into the top 16 from number 33 in the world. And he just haven't l looked back since then. How important is it for a player to get over the line that first time in a ranking event? He's won the Masters, but it's not a ranking tournament. There's something slightly different about it. How will this take him on? I think you've got to look back to the World Championships when he won a few, you know, last frame finishes. In the Masters, he'd done, I don't know, two or three of them. And that gives you confidence when they come along. And at 8 five, 5, he didn't really fancy going to go into 8 all. But it turned all of a sudden, he gained the momentum. And when he came to 8 all, he's had the confidence of doing it previous under pressure this season and last. We've seen this week as well, haven't we, how Ronnie O'Sullivan can scare players simply because they have never beat him be beaten him before. They don't know how to beat him. Mark Selby had beaten Ronnie before, a few years ago, up in Scotland. Now he's beaten him again, something that Ali Carter hadn't done. We saw what happened to him. Sean Murphy's never beaten him. We saw what happened to him. There's that edge as well that he's got now. Yeah, that's what all champions need to have in the makeup is not to be intimidated or be frightened to play anybody else in the game. And Mark Selby certainly isn't scared of Ronnie O'Sullivan. And if he's not scared of Ronnie O'Sullivan, he's not going to be scared of anybody in the game. I mean, because Ronnie O'Sullivan most people think he's always a man to beat in tournaments at the moment um, but right now it's Mark Selby. Yeah, you, you wouldn't bet against these two meeting at some point in Sheffield, would you? Uh, the way that these two are playing, it's going to take one or the other to beat one or the other. Well, if they're in a separate half, they could meet in the final. I'm not sure how the draws span out, but um, there's a lot could happen before now and then. I mean, um, in the early rounds in Sheffield, not easy. There's a lot of good qualifiers that could come through, and the pressure is always on the top seed. I know that Mark has, has won a ranking tournament as well as the Masters. All of a sudden, he's expected to win. It's a slightly different game then. And we forget as well how well Sean Murphy's played this week. John Higgins played very well in patches. A lot of players playing very well at the moment. The World Championships is going to be a treat. You'll both be there. Thank you very much indeed for your contribution this evening. Now, the World Championships not too far away either. 11 weeks tonight. It will be the final at the Crucible Theatre in Sheffield. And runner-up last year, Mark Selby will hope to go one better this time around and make it all the way and lift that famous trophy. The BBC's coverage begins on the 19th of April, a familiar date to sports fans in Wales as Joe Calzaghe fights in Las Vegas that evening, and then it's snooker all the way for 17 nights. Will Mark Selby win there as he has here tonight? From all of us, bye-bye.